Darren in Orlando, Florida. Hey, Darren. Mr. H, how you doing? First Great. time caller. Um, I was just want to point out something in the Zimmerman case. Um, he said that Trayvon Martin had his hand over his mouth, over his nose, and he was screaming for help at the same time. How can you do that? There's no way. Right. And then another thing, the defense, they blocked the uh, the uh, state wanted to bring in analysis to uh, listen to the voices to see if that was Zimmerman's voice or was it Trayvon's voice. Right. And the judge said no. That. They didn't. Yeah. The defense didn't want that to happen. Right. That would have been an open. That would have been a shut case if they would allow that to come in. Only yep. thing they had to do is let uh, Zimmerman holler help one time, and then uh, the person would have analyzed if it was Zimmerman or not. Me personally, I don't believe it was Zimmerman. Yeah. Okay. And then another thing. I let me let me add if to that, Darren. If if I'm a guy, if I'm the guy who's holding a loaded, and you know. It doesn't even have a safety. I was going to say with safety off. It doesn't even have a safety. I'm the guy who's got a loaded gun with hollow point bullets in it in my hand. I am not going mm-hmm. to be the guy who is screaming, help me, help me, help me. No, you're not. You're not. I mean, you're let's right. just apply you're some right. simple totally, logic here. Yes, yes. You're totally right. And then, and then another thing, if Zimmerman was getting his head beat in the, in the concrete, those were little baby scratches on the back of his head. If he got his head slammed into that concrete so hard and so rough as the defense claimed, his head would have been split wide open. Right. Yeah, even the defense had to acknowledge that, that the, the wounds were inconsistent with George Zimmerman's assertion that he had been repeatedly smashed into the concrete. They were more consistent with his perhaps having fallen and hit his head on the concrete. And I'm, I'm going to, Mr. H, I'm going to shift gears on you. No one bring into, brought into the fact that it, it really it didn't have anything to do with the case. But George Zimmerman's dad is a retired judge. I think there was witness. I think there was ju- uh, jury uh, temperament. I think this was set up from the word go. Zimmerman oh, knew what was going on. I sure. really do believe that. Yeah. Zimmerman well, you got a you got a small town in rural Florida, and and his and his dad is a white guy who's a retired judge, and the whole legal establishment mm-hmm. decides we're not going to go after this guy's son. And then finally they're forced to, but they're still standing up for this guy's son. That's that. I had forgotten that, Darren. Thank you for reminding me. He picked, he picked a fight with Trayvon. Yeah. Zimmerman knew the law. He claimed when he went on Fox News and talked to Henley or whatever his name is, he did not know the stand the ground law. But right. it came out in court that he knew it. Right. He picked a fight with Trayvon to do what he did. Right. That's what the bottom line. He stopped that boy and he killed him in cold blood. I agree. And that lady that was on the judge, she's claimed that there was no racial in, involved in it, racial profiling. It was crazy. That's that's the most yeah. absurd, asinine thing I have ever heard in my life. Yep, I agree. This started this started with race, uh, arguably months or years before when George Zimmerman started calling the police every time a black person drove through or walked through his neighborhood. It, you know, period. And it was saturated in race from day one. It was all about race. I've been saying that from, from the time of the arrest until this day. And all these, all these, frankly, white racists who may not even realize that they're racist, they're sitting around going, oh, it's not about race. Let's not talk about race. Let's talk about the law. blah de blah blah Well, if you want to talk about the law, then why was Trayvon Martin not entitled to stand his ground? Why is, you know, why is anybody concerned about the fact that George Zimmerman might have gotten beat up by Trayvon Martin if Trayvon Martin had the right to even use deadly force against him under the Stand Your Ground law? Uh, you know, it's, it's like there are two standards of justice being applied, one for the white guy, one for the black guy, or one for the, if you want to say, George Zimmerman, half Hispanic, half white guy, whatever, whatever you want to call him, and the other for the African American. And, and I don't see that being pointed out in the media, and I, w- I wish it was. And, and I hope that you all will help me um, get, that, get that word out, if that, if that makes sense to you, Darren. Is my argument making sense? makes a lot of sense. You, okay. The post, uh, uh, George Bush, when he passed the law, what have you, and pre-post, what have you, all of that is making a lot of sense. You hitting the head, the hammer, uh, the nail right on the head. Okay. Darren, thank you very much. Yeah, it was Jeb Bush, but yeah, got it. Darren, thank you for the call, and thanks, thanks for uh, listening to us there in, in um, Orlando.